Hi there, it's Interghost here, it's the end of February, so let's do another pickups video. Interghost is at the carpool. He's picking out games to show to you. He really likes to play on his view. And if you think you've got a high score, well, that's what Retro Records is for. His ex con team aren't living anymore. Him and all the dudes are singing out of tune. It's a friendly YouTube host, Interghost. Yeah, so another month gone. This is the uh, shortest month of the year, so it seems to have flown by pretty quickly. Uh, seems like it was only yesterday that it was. Um, Christmas so yeah I've picked up a few more bits I've got a new background now I've tidied up the game room a little bit so still sorting out some things uh, but this month I have been selling off uh, quite a few bits and pieces which I don't really uh, have much interest in keeping uh, a lot of figures I've sold uh, which have just been sat there um, not being appreciated and a few board games and video games that sort of thing so this is, I've used that money to buy these things uh, which I picked up this month. So technically, uh, I've not spent any money, which is always a good thing. And uh, all of these things I've bought this month, um, apart from one which was a gift, uh, have been funded by selling other bits I had lying around. So Shock16 in my last video said there was no books uh, in the pickups last month. So just to let you know, I have picked up a couple of books this time. So. Uh, should we start with those? So the first one I picked up is from a company called Bitmap Books, uh, which you're probably aware of if you watch my channel. They make really cool sort of retro uh, gaming books. And uh, one of their newer ones they brought out is this one. And it's the Game Boy, the box art collection. Now this is a really big hefty book. Uh, I think it cost me 30 pounds. Um, but it's really good quality and if you love Game Boy like I do uh, it's really it's a really good buy so I'll just give you a quick look of what's inside so you get like uh, different box art and then you get a bit about each game and then also at the bottom you get the screenshots and there's hundreds and hundreds of them in here and it's UK and also American and Japanese exclusive boxes as well and uh, yeah just really good nostalgia and uh, also there's a lot in here which I've never even heard of before so it's given me a lot of uh, cool ideas for new games that I want to pick up on the Game Boy and um, yeah if you love Game Boy I would highly recommend this book uh, really good quality really nice layout and pictures on there so yeah that's the uh, the Game Boy box art collection and yeah, I highly recommend them. And then from the same company, uh, Bitmap Books, they were having a sale on their War of the Worlds book. Now this isn't game related, but they do do other books as well. And they were selling this one for 20 pounds. And basically it's the full story of War of the Worlds by HG Wells, uh, but it's a illustrated edition, as you can see I'm sort of halfway through it at the moment. But again, very good quality book. Um, got all the text and then yeah you've got the illustrations as well inside uh, if you're a fan of the musical or the story or the films you're gonna love this one as well so yeah there's quite a lot of text because it is the full story it's not been um, cut down at all but yeah, it's just really nice quality book. And again, that was 20 pounds, it's reduced. I think it still is, so if you're interested in that, I'd go and get that at the moment, because uh, it's a bargain price. So that's the War of the Worlds book. And then finally, I got a D&D book, and this was for my Valentine's present from my wife. So it was D&D, uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So this is a supplementary book to the main um, rules and it is just more spells and um, I think there's some classes in there some new job roles um, 
things like new mounts that you can ride on. Basically, it's just extra rules which you can add into D&D to make it more interesting. Uh, you can pick and choose which ones you want to use. You don't have to use them all. It's more of like a, a suggestion of extra rules to make the game more fun. So I haven't read that one yet, uh, but yeah, really looking forward to doing that. And really looking forward to playing some D&D because ever since I really got into it, we've been in lockdown, so it's been <laughs> very hard to play it. So that was the, the three books I got this month. So there were a few games. Now the first one I want to show is one which uh, I was sent by my friend uh, Gasset Steve. Now he actually sent this last month and I forgot to show it, so sorry about that mate. Um, he didn't mention it, but he went down to Tesco, I think it was, and he found that they were doing a flash sale on a lot of last gen games. So he bought up a load of them and he uh, posted them on our group chat and uh, straight away me and I think it was my friend Paul said oh well, I'd like that game and um, I said I wanted this one and he kindly enough sent it to us. I think they were only a pound each so bargain. This one is Man of Medan which is a sort of adventure game. It's one of those games where it plays like a movie uh, but you have a group of characters and then your decisions and what you choose to do change the outcome of the story so it's a very story heavy game the characters in it look like the actors who play the, the voices of it and yeah so you go through it, you play the game and you make decisions if somebody dies they stay dead so you can have different endings and uh, yeah really looking forward to playing this one, haven't played it yet haven't really been on my PlayStation 4 very much um, over the past year but really looking forward to playing that. So thanks for sending that through, Steve. Didn't want any money, and uh, yeah, good man. Next one was one I got off of Facebook uh, Marketplace, and it was £20, and it's Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Now this is a platform game which I've seen before. I think it used to be a Xbox exclusive, but obviously now it's on the, uh, the Switch. This is the second one in the series, uh, so I haven't played this one yet, but I've heard it's really, really good. Um, I want to play the first one before I play this one and I'll be trying to pick up the first one but it goes for quite a lot of money so uh, I'm trying to uh, keep an eye out for it and grab it at a bargain price but yeah looking at the review of this game it looks really cool and I'm really looking forward to playing that and for 20 quid that was a bargain I think CEX probably sell it for about 38 40 pounds so yeah a real good pick up that one and finally for the games uh, I got the Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury and uh, I pre-ordered it from Nintendo, so you got the um, still book, which is quite nice. The only problem I think with these still books is um, it kind of annoys me that they send the normal box and the still book box, uh, because then whichever one you put the game in, you've then got an extra case. But uh, anyway, it's, it's a nice little bonus. Uh, it's nice to have. And then also they sent through this uh, sheet of stickers. Now the reason they put stickers in with it is because in the 3D World game, as you go through the levels, you collect up different, I think they're called stamps, but they look like stickers, so it's just, it's in that sort of theme of the game. I uh, probably won't be using these, and if I do, um, it will probably go the stick on my laptop or something like that, but yeah, another nice little freebie. And the actual main game, so yeah, this is the game that came out on the Wii U originally, and it's... I think it is my probably my, my favourite Mario game. It's a bit too easy, but it's probably the, the most fun Mario game to play, and it's one which I keep going back to all the time. And the main reason being is this you can play it um, on the same screen with other people. And unlike the Mario Brothers, I think it's New Mario Brothers Wii or Wii U, um, where you have to sort of race each other to the end and you can push each other off blocks and kill each other and stuff. This one you really do work together and you have to get through the level together and then complete it and then at the end it tells you who got the, the highest score. Uh, yeah, it's just the most fun Mario game. If you've never played it, I would highly recommend it. I think you can get it, yeah, that's, it, I was gonna say, it quite annoyed me that I pre-ordered this and it was 50 pounds pre-order and then on the day of release, I obviously got it through the post, but um, there was websites selling the game for 30 pounds. So, it's quite bad that Nintendo let you pre-order it for 50 and then obviously they sell it to shops for a lot cheaper and they are able to sell it for 30, 30 pounds on the day of release. So that was a bit of a, a sting. I know 
other people don't get the still book and stickers but I'd rather pay 30 quid than 50 so not sure if I'll pre-order any more games in the future but that's, that's a real shame unless it's a, a you know limited edition type thing um, but apart from that you also get Bowser's Fury on there which is a separate game uh, using the same sort of engine as Mario 3D World and set in the same universe and it really concentrates on the cat suit uh, basically I hope this is what they're going to do with the next Mario game but it's Bowser's Fury is more like an open world Mario game you don't have separate levels you have one big world and it's separated into different areas and as you enter different areas it will come up with what the um, name of the level is um, or gives you like a hint to get the next um, star to complete that part of the world so that works really well and then you've got Bowser sat in the middle with all the worlds around it and uh, every so often he wakes up and um, it all goes dark and starts raining and he starts firing fire at you um, and it changes stuff which is happening in the world around you so it's a really good idea uh, unfortunately I completed it within the, de well, on the day that I got it so um, it's not very long at all I think there's a hundred stars to get and uh, you can complete it by collecting 50 which I did and now I think I'm up to about 70 um, but yeah it's not a hard game at all um, there are a couple of little tricky bits but apart from that yeah quite an easy Mario game but I'm hoping this will be um, a glimpse of what they are working on with Mario because I'd really love to see a proper open world Mushroom Kingdom where you can wander around and um, find lots of hidden secrets and that sort of thing so yeah I would say really worth picking this game up if you played it before or if you've never played it um, it's worth going back and playing it again so that's uh, Super Mario 3D Worlds so apart from that I also got some Masters of the Universe He-Man figures now these are new figures called Masters of the Universe Origins and what they've done is they've taken the look of the old original figures and remade them in a new style so that they've got the proper uh, ball joints they get fully poseable and uh, high quality plastic and they feel real solid uh, like the new figures uh, but they look just like the old figures so you get that real nostalgic hit as well and I've gone a little bit mad collecting these um, haven't got them all but uh, trying to get there uh, so these are the ones I've got so far so obviously I had to get uh, He-Man first and here he is and as you can see it really does look like the um, the old original figures he's got his uh, half of this, the power sword on the back because obviously Skeletor's got the other half um, and he's got the original uh, shield and axe and as you can see like the the joints are fully poseable you've got the leg movements uh, you've got full um, ball joints on the arms even the heads they look forward to the up and down and they turn um, the waist turns uh, the wrists, the ankles, so yeah they're fully poseable and um, I just really love them because they actually look like the figures um, from when I was a kid and uh, I was saying to my friends that uh, it's really funny that I look at these and I get loads of nostalgia and um, it makes me think these are what I remember the figures being like um, obviously when you get the uh, original figures out they are very sort of low quality plastic uh, floppy joints uh, they don't really stand up they're quite hunched over I've got a few I might show you one in a minute um, but this is what I remember them to be like so to have them made like this is really cool these are actually $14.99 retail and I managed to get him from Smith's toy store they actually had um, He-Man and Skeletor the rest of them I think were sold out in my area but yeah if you want him you can still buy him retail which is a really good value price I think for £15 and then I had to pick up Battle Cat as well. Again, all the stuff comes off of them. Um, you know, the mouth moves, the heads are on a pivot joint, so it, it's all movable. The tail, the uh, the legs, and everything. So really cool. Looks very much like the original one. Um, and this one was twenty five pounds from Amazon. Again, they got a lot of them still on Amazon. 
uh, if you're interested in them. There are a few which are uh, sold out, the more sort of uncommon ones, ones which um, I don't think many people will buy. But yeah, that's Battle Cat. Then we've got Skeletor with his sword and his uh, staff. I was thinking uh, the only thing which doesn't remind me of being a kid is I used to chew all these. So my originals used to have bite marks all over them. I uh, don't think I'd do that on the new ones. But yeah, so Skeletor looks very similar. And this isn't a figure I had when I was younger, but I, I wanted. It was um, Panthor, which is Skeletor's mount. Uh, the original used to have sort of furry uh, flux, is it flux or flux um, stuff all over it, uh, which used to wear off after, <laughs> after you played with it a bit. Uh, they have made a uh, furry version of this, but I think it's a Comic Con US um, exclusive, and obviously that yeah, makes it really expensive. But I'm happy to get Pad for Skeletor's uh, cat steed. Again, that was £25. Uh, this one uh, actually came as the uh, the ship and Prince Adam. This all came in the same box. And uh, this one was actually £25, which I think was an absolute bargain for the, uh, the figure and the, um, the ride. The actual original used to come with a, uh, a car on the back, which it used to link into. But they've only brought out the, the front uh, the sky, is it a sky rider? I think it's called. And then um, you get this base as well to click onto, so it makes it the same height as the other characters, which I think is really cool and it makes it so it displays really well. So, yeah, I really like that one. Next one is Orco. And again, they put it on this really cool sort of uh, stand which you can bend about and um, you can take him off. Uh, but this is. I think this one was 15, 15, between 15 and 20 pounds. Uh, this is probably my least favorite one. You don't actually get any sort of weapons with them or anything like that. But the thing that disappoints me is the original used to sit them on the table and you used to put like a plastic um, pull thing through his back. And when you pull, pulled it through, you used to spin round. They've obviously taken that away and they've just added this base to it. Um, and this one actually feels quite light and uh, cheap compared to the other figures. So I think this one should have been about a tenner price range, but I, I still love the figure, so I had to get it. That's all co. And then we've got uh, Manny Faces with his blaster gun. This one really gives me sort of nostalgia, just the shape of the weapon. Uh, they've also made it so, you know, his face turns round. So you've got the monster face, the robot face, and the sort of human-ish face. Um, they've made him very yellow compared to the old one, which was sort of a, um, what's it, a beigey, orangey color. But uh, yeah, again, you can move his head as well, which is quite cool. The other one was very sort of stiff, the uh, original st uh, figure. And again, you've got all the articulation on there. So that's Manny Faces, really cool one. And the last two, uh, we've got Evil Lin which is very, very similar to the original. I've got the original one. Uh, apart from you get the extra bends on the knees and the elbows and everything like that. So um, you get her staff. Again, I think this was between 15 and 20 quid. And then finally, we got the uh, Beast Man. I thought this one looks really cool. This one looks very much like the original. I like the uh, the plastic armor thing they've got here and the uh, shoulder pads. Very reminiscent of the original and they've even put the old whip weapon which <laughs> looks very sort of weird so that they've made it so you, he can hold on to it but yeah beast man it's a classic so i just thought i'd show you original one um you can see like the the legs only bend at the the hip and they're on sort of like elastic bands so they sort of cling back into place and they didn't really stand up very well and then you had the arm, which just bends like that, and the heads are rubber. I think, did they turn round? No, no, I don't think it even turns round. Um, but you did get this spring-loaded waist, which you don't get on the, the new ones. But again, you can't pose it, so you can't turn them and leave them there, because if you let go, it bends back. So they've made the new ones fully poseable. Um, I hope they bring this one out, an Origins figure. It's one of my favorites, this is Buzz Off. So yeah, I've got quite a few um, of the original ones as well. 
but uh, as I get the new ones I'm going to replace them and sell the older ones uh, I know that sounds quite bad but um, I think the new ones look really cool and there's no point having both so there we go that's what I got I got uh, three books uh, three games and a bunch load of He-Man figures tell me what you think of uh, all of them what do you think about the figures would you buy them uh, if you're a He-Man fan would you buy them and replace them for the old ones or do you think the old ones are more nostalgic to you um, let me know what you think also I've taken them all out of the boxes because I like to display them I like to play with them i um, been discussing that sort of thing with my friends as well do you leave yours in the box or do you take them out nowadays I take all of my figures out uh, as you can see I've got sort of my Playmobil Ghostbusters and Back to the Future I've got some other figures at the top here but yeah I, I tend to take all my figures out of the boxes these days so you can have a proper look around them play with them you can build them you can set them up how you want to and you don't just have a load of boxes sat on the shelf which I think just looks like you're walking into a shop really um, if you want to do that you could just walk into a shop in town and have a look at the boxes but um, I do keep all the boxes I put them up in the loft so if I did ever get go and sell them I do have the boxes which if people wanted them but yeah like I said I haven't got any thoughts of selling them so hopefully they're still in my collection so yeah I'm, I'm waffling on now let me know what you think remember to thumb up the video if you liked it thumb it down if you didn't subscribe if you haven't done so already and click the bell uh, and I'll see you next time cheers